Today we're going to look at equilibrium. In translational equilibrium, that means the forces on objects are all balanced and the center of mass does not accelerate. There's also rotational equilibrium, and there we can say all the external torques are balanced, so the object has no angular acceleration. In addition to looking at translational and rotational equilibrium, we can also look at static and dynamic. In static translational equilibrium, not only is the acceleration zero, but the velocity is also zero. Dynamic translational equilibrium, acceleration is zero, velocity is not equal to zero. So for example, static translational equilibrium would be if your car is parked. Dynamic translational equilibrium would be if you have the cruise control on. For rotational static equilibrium, not only is alpha zero, but omega, the angular velocity, is also zero. This could be your wheels when your car is parked. And then your wheels, if you're in, if you have the cruise control set on a straight road, that would be dynamic rotational equilibrium. Alpha is zero, omega is not equal to zero. We could also look at stable versus unstable equilibrium. If we had a ball at the bottom of a bowl, that's stable equilibrium because moving it a little bit away from its equilibrium position will cause it to roll back to that position. A pencil balanced on its point is unstable, though, since if we move it a little bit, it will keep moving farther from its initial position. So this is really nothing that you haven't already done in previous chapters, except now we're just restricting the F equals MA to zero, and torque equals I alpha will also be zero, the sum of the torques. So really it's just going to be a bunch of examples of this, and there are a few that you see in every book, and Below here is one of them. Let's say we have a beam 3 meters long, 185 kilograms in mass. There's a hinge holding it to the wall and then a steel cable uh, holding the end of it to the wall. If the steel cable anchor is 1.7 meters above the hinge and an 80 kilogram person on the beam is 2 meters away from the hinge, we'd like to know the tension in the cable and the forces exerted by the hinge, and we have to assume that there are forces in both the horizontal and vertical directions from the hinge. So, since this thing is standing still, then we're going to get to uh, use our ideas of equilibrium. So we call the vertical hinge force FV, and we're going to say it's upward, and the horizontal hinge force is FH, and we'll say it's pointing to the right. If it turns out we're wrong, and the vertical hinge force is downward, for example, we'll get a negative number when we solve for it later. So we have three equations that we get from Newton's second law. Some of the forces in the x direction is mAx, same thing in the y direction, and some of the torques is I alpha. We can pretty much always write these down. But because this beam is in equilibrium, we can simplify these and say these sums of forces and torques are all zero, not just ma or I alpha. We also are going to want to know the angle between the cable and the beam, so we can take the arc tangent of 1.7, which is its height, over 3, which is the length of the beam, and we get 29.5 degrees. So if we look in the x direction, the only two forces that have components there are the hinge force and the tension, the x component of the tension. So Tx is T cosine theta. F hinge is therefore also equal to T cosine theta since we just have the two. Uh, vertically we have four different forces. We have vertical component of the hinge force, we have the Y component of tension, and we have both the mass of the person and the mass of the beam. All of these have to equal zero. If we put in what we know here, we can write that vertical force plus T sine theta they have to support the weight of both the person and the beam, and that total weight is 2,597 newtons. Now we need to use the last equation, the torques. Here it makes sense to choose the hinge point as our center of rotation, because if we do that, we get rid of both FV and FH as far as things that could cause torques. So we'll pick clockwise torques as positive. That means the weight of the person and the weight of the beam both generate clockwise torques. Cable tension gives us a counterclockwise torque. We know we have to have one from somewhere if we're going to get these things to, to sum up to zero. So we have mass of the beam times g times the distance from the center of mass to the point of rotation, which is one half the length. Then we got mass of the person times g times 2L over 3 for the distance from center of the person's mass to the center of rotation. 
And finally, TL sine theta, the tension, the length of the whole beam, and the sine of the angle between them. We can rewrite those things. TL sine theta is TY times L. We can divide out by the L's everywhere. We can solve this for TY and get 1429 newtons. Once we know that, we can go back to our earlier vertical equation and get that FV must be 1168 newtons. The total tension, we have to have that T sine theta is TY, so the total tension must be 2899 newtons. And finally, we can plug it into our first equation and see that FH is 